Hi, I'm Brian Smith and I'm a celebrity portrait photographer. Over the years, I've been lucky enough to photograph everybody from Anne Hathaway to Tony Bennett to Adrian Grenier, Adrian Brody, Sam Jackson, Tim Daly, Sir Richard Branson, and Donald Trump. I've got the greatest job in the world because I get to drop in on the lives of famous people for a little bit of time and get to know them. Welcome to the Mark Silver Show, Advancing Your Photography. We connect you with photographers who have mastered their craft, sharing their insight and showing you their photography tips so you can go right out and use them. Brian, thanks for joining me on Advancing Your Photography. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for having me out here. Brian, tell me about your approach to photography and the type of work you really, really love to do. Well, I'm a celebrity portrait photographer, so I shoot all ranges of people, everybody from famous actors and, and athletes, CEOs, but I could be, it could be just as likely that I'm photographing your next door neighbor. So one of the great things about being a portrait photographer is it's a chance to drop into people's lives for five minutes, five hours a day. Um, and meet people from all different walks of life. What about shooting celebrities? What, what's the magic that goes on there? Well, celebrities are fun because it's like they're the type of people you kind of want to meet. So it's this great entree into their lives where, you know, you get to spend a little bit of time with them, find out a little bit about them. Um, sometimes the challenge there is when you're photographing somebody who's been photographed a lot is how do you create a defining photograph of somebody who's been photographed a thousand times so we usually try to have a lot of fun with it and just let them let them be themselves and not over direct things sometimes if we've got a great concept we'll go with that but if they want to take it in, in another direction I think it's really important to give them the space that it's a collaboration instead of here come we're gonna do this to you so how do you draw the kind of emotions out that you're looking for I think I think one of the things that we always try to do is keep the set as small as possible. I think, you know, we've all we've all been to the sets where there's like um, a cast of a hundred behind the photographers, and everybody's talking on their cell phones and blackberries, and um, it, you know, being in front of that is very disconcerting. So a lot of times, it's like even if we're set up in a huge studio, we'll find a little corner and kind of, you know create a tiny intimate space for the subjects where it's really all about them and being in front of the camera and they can kind of zone out everybody who's around. As much as I can, try to keep those people in a separate room so it's just, you know, myself, a stylist, and the celebrity. And it's, it, um, a lot of times getting rid of all those distractions, um, I think people react better to the shoots. Makes sense. What are some of the key things that you use every time you pick up a camera or even before you pick one up? Well, I think what I try to do, like before we even you know, bring the subject in, before we get a camera, I always start with lighting. You know, that's sort of your foundation. It's like you get the light as close to what you're going to expect with the person, so really all you've got to do is fine tune it. So you, if you create this situation that somebody can walk into a situation that's beautifully lit, they look great, suddenly they're, they're at ease. Because, you know, one of the first things that they do is, you know, subjects that have been in front of a camera a lot generally know when, they're, when the lighting is good. And you want that just not to be a concern. You want them, um, all of the technical aspects to kind of fade into the background and just to be about them. Any kind of nuts and bolts lighting tips? Well, I always start with a, with a single light source. You know, a lot of times if I'm doing an environmental portrait, it's a single light source that's um, augmented by the available light. So it's like, you know, an ambient fill and um, a light on the subject. And being able to light your every situation gives you the control of kind of putting the sun where you want it. So sometimes I might want a very, you know, natural soft look other times I kind of want to chisel the light so that it's very dramatic and, and almost like you're, you're lighting a sculpture in a museum. So I think a lot of that goes in ter terms of like you've got all these options and 
what is going to work best for your subject. Brian, how do you get the mojo in a photograph? The mojo in a photograph. If I knew how to get the mojo in a photograph every time, it would always be there. I mean, yeah. sometimes you get really, really lucky. I think the best thing that you can do is kind of put all the elements into place and then be willing to shake it up and go in a completely different direction. And I think that's, I think that's where the mojo comes from. It comes from planning and then being willing to deviate from that plan when you know, all of a sudden something much better presents itself. You have to make sure you don't get in the way of a better photograph than you'd planned. So um, you plan ahead, but then, you know, plan to be flexible. Gotcha. Are there any particular shoots that come to mind where it just took that turn and for well, the Well, we, no, we've done, we've done a lot that way. We, we did a shoot of Jose Canseco and I was there. My wife's the stylist and we're there with, with wardrobe for him and he walks out in the sh it, for the shoot wearing matching pinstripe suits and pinstripe shorts. <laughs> and that's one of those things you just thank the, the photo gods for Jose Canseco thinking the way he did. Because if you showed up with that stuff, he'd never wear it. So right. it's like when that happens, you go, okay, we had wardrobe, but this is so much better. So get your subjects involved in the process. And if they come up with a, with a better concept, be ready to roll with that too. Now you've been at this for a while, how long? Yeah, I've been uh, shooting for over 30 years, which is uh, of course because I started when I was four years old. So, um, <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, I started off as a newspaper photographer shooting in high school for the local newspaper and um, kind of got kind of got hooked. So have been at it ever since. Brian, any particular tips in terms of gear? Well, my favorite piece of gear, I've got every lens under the sun, but if somebody held a gun to my head and said, you've got to do a portrait and you've got one lens to work with, I'd use a 24 to 70 zoom because that's the perfect focal length that you can shoot everything from a horizontal wide angle um, uh, environmental portrait at 24 millimeters to coming in and doing a tight intimate portrait at 70. Um, and actually 70 millimeter is one of my favorite focal lengths. It's shorter than a traditional um, portrait lens, which is more often an 85, 100, 135, but it, it allows you to um, work in closer to your subject and have more of a conversation instead of standing back with a 200 millimeter lens and shouting directions across at your subject. It just makes for a more intimate uh, interaction with your subject. Okay, you're in San Francisco and you're going to be giving a talk on the secrets of portraiture. What are those secrets? Well, I think, I think the key to portraiture is interacting with your subject and figure out really like how people are going to react well to you. There's people that want things very, very low key. There's people that want a real high key shoot with a lot of energy. And I think finding ways that you can kind of relate to their subject if somebody loves to be the center of attention, they're a photographer's dream. On the other hand, if they're not really that comfortable with the process of photography, a lot of times I just involve them in conversation and the, the best thing you can have happen is if someone hates to be photographed, be done with the photo shoot before they realize it's even happened. <laughs> so it's like a lot of times I'm just talking to people as we're going, not particularly about turn your chin a little bit to the left, but what was it like when you played with Miles Davis kind of thing? And it's, you get them in conversation and before, before they know it's you, kind of just two friends chatting away. So I think that's one of the keys and I think that's one of the things that, that makes people um, more at ease in front of a camera. In terms of posing, you kind of have to base that in terms of if somebody is a natural in front of a camera and moves around and is very spontaneous. You want to give them the freedom to do that. You want to light the shot in a way that you don't have to keep moving the lights every time they move two feet. On the other hand, if somebody's not comfortable, put them in a position where they look cool and are, and, um, are at ease in the shot. And how do you find that cool position? Well, a lot of times, you know, if you're photographing, um, you know, we shoot, in addition to celebrities, we shoot a lot of CEOs and, um, tech guys and stuff like that, that a lot of times it's just finding um, 
a great environment and putting it in a position where they can sit in the shot or lean into a shot where, where suddenly they're at, at ease and are comfortable. Okay, now looking at your career, what advice do you have for beginning photographers to get up to speed? Well, the biggest thing that I would say is anybody who wants to be a portrait photographer is you have to go out there and learn to work with people and shoot a lot of photographs. Go up to people on the street and, you know, take a photograph of them. You know, learn to approach strangers because you're going to do that forever. I mean, most of the people that I photograph, I'm photographing them for the first time and it's, you know, go up, introduce yourself, tell them what you'd like to do, um, why you'd like to do a shot, involve them in the process. And um, one of the greatest pieces of advice I ever got from uh, photographers when I was starting out, somebody said, go out and find 50 strangers, approach them and, and take a portrait of them that, that shows something about themselves. It's not just the exercise of, you know, hi, I want to take a shot of you, but do it in a way that each photograph reveals a little bit about the, the subject. And I think that type of an exercise makes it so much easier to be in front of a camera. Brian, any other kind of practical points of exercises or things that you would recommend? I think one of the important things is a lot of the portraiture that I do is environmental portraiture. And that's really about the subject and the location. So when you're doing environmental portraits, what's going on behind the subject is just as important as what they're doing. So you have to pay as much attention to you know, the backgrounds that you want. You want the background to be interesting, but you want to get rid of all the distractions in there. It's really a case that less is more. Everything you take out of a photograph that's distracting makes your point that much stronger. So if you're doing an environmental portrait, it's like, you pay attention to every bit of the frame, not you know, just your subject, but how your subject is in terms of interaction with the background. Gotcha. What is your core viewpoint in terms of photography? Any, any particular principles that you kind of live by? I think, I think the, the essence of being a photographer is discovery. So I think one of the great things um, as a photographer is you get a chance to experience something new every single day and I think one of the um, great things is to be able to tell people's stories through a fresh set of eyes. It's I may be photographing somebody who's been photographed a thousand times before, maybe the first time they've ever been shot for a magazine and no matter who it is I want that picture to be really special for them because that's you know that's their 15 minutes in, of fame. It's yeah. like for some people, it's like a continuous life of fame. But if you're photographing the uh, guy and it's like the, it's the only time they're ever going to be in a magazine, you want that time to be just as special. What emotions have you hit as a photographer? I think as a photographer, you hit like every emotion. Highs, lows, anxiety, is the shot going to work? Um, um, it, it, suddenly, it like things that go much better than you could possibly imagine. So I think it's a case of like, you know, even when you're at an ultimate high and you think you've just had the greatest experience, it's like, I think photographers tend to think like, well, what, what did I leave out? What could I do better? So I think you're constantly, you're never as low as your, your lowest low. You probably have salvaged something that you don't know. And the same point, even when everything goes really great, it's like I always ask myself, it's like, what could I do better? So I think you really run um, the, the whole gamut of, of, of emotions. And how do you keep the passion going or how do you keep raising the bar in your own work? I think one of, I think one of the keys um, as an artist is going out and seeing what a lot of other people um, do. It's like I take in theater, go to motion pictures, um, gallery exhibitions um, you know I even see uh, you know like a lot of times if I'm out in the evening I'll take um, take notice of interior design in a restaurant I think one of the things that keeps you energized as an artist is watching how other artists and creative people um, handle their craft so that's one of the things that keeps me fresh 
Brian, tell me about one of your favorite shoots. Well, that's tough because over the years I've been really blessed with a lot of wonderful opportunities, but one in particular that will always stand out was photographing uh, Sir Richard Branson wow. on Necker Island for a Time Magazine story on Virgin Galactic. And we were photographing him at uh, on Christmas Eve morning and had gone in the day before to scout where we're gonna, we're gonna shoot. And he agreed to wear a space suit for the shot. Yep. And so we found our location and uh, that night at dinner, kind of chatting away about everything and suddenly he got really serious and said, Brian, I understand you found a spot for tomorrow. What do you, where do you want to shoot? And I said, well, there's a little sandbar off the island where the windsurfers are set up. It'd be beautiful, we could shoot out there and then we get the island in the background and, and nothing but you and the Caribbean waters and blue sky around you. I said, oh, that's, that's great. And it's like, when do you want to do it? And I said, I'd love to do it at first light. And he got really, really silent for a second and he said, Brian, the sun comes up at 5.30 in the morning. And I was all about to do my song and dance of like, well, we can make it look like it's first light because I'm going to light it anyway and stuff. But before I could say another word, he said, so you and I need to be at the boat at 5 o'clock. <laughs> so suddenly, like, going out in a boat with a billionaire who's donning a spacesuit standing in the middle of the Caribbean on Christmas Eve morning is about as good as it gets. That's something you run into every day. Awesome. All right, any final tips for photographers who just want to become better at their craft? Well, I think one of the keys to getting better is practice, is go out and shoot and shoot and shoot. And I think, you know, you get, you get more comfortable with technique. Uh, you know, it becomes something that you don't focus on. I think one of the keys to particularly working with people is not to have the distractions of, you know, how do I light this? How do I technically make this work? You want that to become second nature. And it's like anything in life. The more you do it, the more comfortable you're going to be with it. You got it. Brian, thanks for joining us on Advancing Your Photography. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Be sure to subscribe to our blog now to stay updated on my show. And we'll give you tips and insight to keep advancing your photography. Also, check out our guest's website for a closer look at their work. I'd like to thank Sandisk for sponsoring our show. Tune in to our next episode of Advancing Your Photography for an inside look at another photographer's world. Until then, this is Mark Silver reminding you to get out and capture your own images of life. <laughs>